<laughs> but I think, so my next one kind of feeds right into that. And that's, I wish I would have understood the pay structure of the different jobs or settings before, you know, I kind of picked one. Because again, back to, you know, when you start off, you're just happy to get any job. Mm-hmm. And you don't necessarily, you know, look down the road for the future. And at any job or any setting, you can call HR, right? And see what the opportunities are to, you know, get moved up or what are the opportunities to get a promotion and, you know, get um, more money. And I know that starting out, I never thought of that or looked into that at all. Mm -hmm. So in the schools, as you know, um, at least in Michigan, you, if you switch school systems, they basically start you, you know, from the bottom. And some school districts may give you one, two, up to three years um, to start your salary. But I wish I would have known that going in because I feel like I'm kind of stuck in the school system I am now because I have so many years of service in. Where I know, you know, Iris, you can maybe speak to the hospital setting. It's not necessarily that same way. Mm-hmm. Now, and <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I think that, you know, I think it's still a really good idea to call HR and find out what other opportunities there are at other facilities and kind of get an idea what that facility might be paying versus yours. Um, but it's still, you know, really important to to be able to to, to pursue those questions. Um, and in the hospitals, my experience has been when I've been able to go from one facility to another, they're usually isn't too much of a difference. So I wouldn't have to start all over again, but it also depends on the facility. If it's a facility that more people want to, that is attracting more of the, uh, of of the employees that they're, you know, more people are applying to that type of job, then yeah, you do have a little bit more competition and you might have to, to take a little pay cut. Or if you're going from state from state, that is something that I experienced. Um, coming from Arizona to Colorado, I had to take a pay cut, but also it was the quality of life. I, I was looking for something a little bit different. So knowing that that's something that you might have to sometimes, you know, take that that pay cut, but you have to look at the whole whole picture. Well, and I think something I remember having this conversation with you, Iris, it's been a while, but when you were going to work at a hospital here and advocating for just what skills you bring to a job. Mm -hmm. And I know it's harder sometimes with a school, although I know, I don't know, maybe there is some wiggle room with saying, could I get another year added? I don't, you know, I don't know if there's any wiggle room there, but even with the hospitals, if you say like, Iris, you're bilingual, you know, Mm -hmm. so, okay, what, that's worth something. (laughs) That's worth a lot. So (laughs) I feel like we had that conversation where, you were saying, oh, no, oh, you were talking with somebody that was didn't realize you could negotiate. Absolutely. You're like, no, you can negotiate. Yes. And I, that's something I wish that we would have gotten some sort of class or a seminar in school about that, that you need to mm-hmm. assess the value that you're bringing to that company. And if you have these extra skills to to be able to, to ask for money for those skills. I mean, the worst thing they're going to say is no, but that that is, there is, I think it's a negotiation that has to happen. And a lot of uh, I think speech therapists, when we're new, we don't realize that we can negotiate, not too much, but a little bit, um, to be able to get paid for those extra skills. So um, I think, yeah, that's something that I do wish that we would have gotten a little bit more guidance on. But I think it's also important to have, you know, friends that you can call and maybe you don't, you know, you're not saying the details or specifics of the payment, but at least let them know, hey, did you discuss it? How did it go? What conversations did you have to be able to have this discussion with that future employer? I would have loved to take a business class or something that kind of prepared you for the business world or the business side of being a speech pathologist. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely something that is left out of our program, but yet so many of those skills and principles, you know, end up being in our field. If you want to open your own clinic or, you know, like you said, negotiating all of those things. Mm -hmm. 